Kettle ITN, St Thomas's Hospital. Former England cricketers Mike Gatting and John Embury successfully challenged a last-minute threat to their rebel tour of South Africa. Anti-apartheid campaigners tried to make them appear as witnesses in a British court case while the tour is on. Also today, protesters disrupted the press conference given by the rebel English cricket team who leave on a tour of South Africa tonight. The first photo call of the rebels' tour and a taste of things to come. Thousands threatened disruption in South Africa. Today at a Surrey hotel, it took scarcely a handful. You listen to the wishes of the majority of the people of South Africa, that you understand that you are being paid by the apartheid regime in South Africa, that they are subsidising this tour. The photo session abandoned. Next for interruption, the press conference. I'm sure there'll be demonstrations when we get out there. How much are they paying you, Mr Gaddin? How much of the pain you to go to South Africa? Really What's the blood money like in South Africa? You're going to get a nice new car out of this, Mr. Gadding. You're going to get a yacht out of this, a second home, Mr. Yachting. You're going to get lots of uh, nice uh, perks for the rest of your life on the backs of the blacks of South Africa. It all left the players, many with young families, anxious about what lies ahead, but they defend their right to go. I'm not a politician. Uh, I'm a cricketer, and, and I've been asked to go and play cricket. Mark Austin, ITN Sport, Surrey. Next from ITN is Channel 4 News. Presidential villas, 20 hunting lodges and 21 palaces in Romania. One suggestion is that his biggest palace will be used as a university. As a first step, the front has legally taken possession of it all for the state. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, Bucharest. The High Court in London has given Mike Gatting the all-clear to lead the rebel cricket tour to South Africa. It overturned an earlier ruling which would have forced him to appear as a witness in a London trial during the tour. Meanwhile, anti-apartheid protesters have disrupted a news conference given by England's rebel cricketers. This Surrey hotel had become the overnight headquarters of the South African tourists. They trained together for the first time this morning after other, more conventional venues had refused them admission. Then came just a taste of what they can expect in the next six weeks. A letter from the anti-apartheid movement urging an 11th hour change of mind and delivered by hand for maximum effect. It was followed shortly afterwards by a second one-man protest at a specially arranged news conference. For the rest of your life on the backs of the blacks of South Africa, you're going to get a lot of money out of this, Mr Gatting. Mike Gatting kept his composure throughout. When the tour was announced, he said he didn't know anything about apartheid. Now he says that's changed. I know a bit more about the mechanics now. I know about the Group Areas Act, and the Immunities Act, and a lot of other little acts. Um, and since I've done my homework, one of the acts has been scrapped. Uh, a lot of political prisoners have been released, and um, we understand the release of Mandela is uh, imminent. But that's for the politicians to sort out. In South Africa, a hostile reception awaits them. Protest leaders are no longer guaranteeing peaceful methods. Let us go and destroy it at the point where it must be destroyed. Talking is not going to stop this tour. We have a golden opportunity to engage in very defiant mass action for people's power in this country. Peaceful demonstrations, I would support, provided it's peaceful. I think people who want to watch cricket without having any interruptions, I think their rights should be pr protected too. The players checked in at Heathrow with the sounds of protest still ringing in their ears. The flight to Johannesburg will be their last long moments of quiet for some time. The former Cup final referee Alan Robinson has been found guilty of improper behaviour by the Football Association. He was charged after writing a newspaper article which accused players of cheating.